Good morning. So today I'm going to make a start on laying the brick slips on the chimney breast in my bedroom. So I'll show you the space a little bit better in a second. Um, I've just I've just started stripping the wallpaper off there and then I had to pop out because my daughter had a hair appointment. So looking a bit red nosed and runny nosed because it's so cold out there today. Um, but let me show you what I'm going to be doing. So here is the chimney breast in the bedroom. We've got fitted wardrobes at either side, as you can see there. And this area was boxed in um, all around there. You see the line across there. There was a box there and then the um, chimney breast was just wallpapered. This was obviously when we moved in. So I've never really liked this area and I found a really cheap fireplace over there on Gumtree um, and I decided to go for brick slips on this wall so it looks like an exposed brick chimney breast with the fireplace on and the brick slips have arrived which I will show you now here they are so bright in this corner they're what I'm going to use as spacers and here are the brick slips so I've got lots of boxes of those so first of all, I'm just going to finish stripping the wallpaper off here. It's got like a lining paper on, so I'm going to finish stripping that off there so that the bricks have got the wall to adhere to rather than the wallpaper. There we go, um, the chimney breast is done. I'm really hot and bothered, so I'm just gonna tie my hair back. Um, I've changed my top as well because I was too hot in that jumper. I'm gonna put some tracksuit bottoms on in a minute before I start the messy things. Um, but I have stripped the wall, so that's given me a blank canvas to start again. I think the preparation work is often the most boring, isn't it? And the part that you'd quite like to skip and just get onto the exciting stuff. Well, that's what I prefer anyway. Um, but obviously it's really important to finish all the preparation work because you need a good solid surface for the bricks to stick to. Um, so I've run out of, what is this bit doing? <laughs> I've run out of black bin liners because my husband cleared all the leaves up in the garden yesterday and he's used them all by the looks of it. So I found a carrier bag, so I'm going to clean all this mess up down here and then once I've got everything cleaned up, I'm ready to make a start. So here's my equipment. This is the tile adhesive, which is actually going to hold the brick slips onto the wall. So I went for this rapid set one and it's just gray. Um, so I need to mix this with water. So there's my bucket. So I'm going to do that in spirit level to make sure that the tiles are going to be straight. And then this is what I went for when it comes to cutting them. It looks a bit of a beast, doesn't it? I did look into tile cutters, but I was advised that this grinder would be the best way to do it. So I've hired this from Max Hire, which is just a local tool hire shop, which is up the road from me. And they gave me this generator as well because obviously the plug connection requires this. Um, and for these two, for the weekend, I picked them up yesterday and I'm returning them on Monday. For these two, it was 20 pounds for the weekend. So I think that's really good. And it's not something that I'll use a lot. So I didn't want to buy one of these because I just thought I'm not going to get loads and loads of use out of it. So yeah, that's what I've got. So what I'm going to do is start mixing this. I'm just going to mix a little bit to start with. I've got to take my daughter to the cinema soon. <laughs> She's meeting her friends. She's off to see Frozen. So I'm just going to mix a small amount of this up now. I'm just going to check the instructions. What it looks like is I've got to mix approximately three parts by volume powder to one part by volume water. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this cup. It's a bit easier to get in and out, so I'm going to do three parts of this. So I literally fill it to the top. So one, And there's three. 
three. And then oh, one part water. I've already made a start. I wanted to kind of just get into the swing of it before I explained what I'm doing. So first I want to talk to you about the brick slips that I've chosen. I went with a brick slip company called Kuki Designs, K-U-C-I, I think that's how you pronounce it. I will link everything in the description box below. Um, and I went for the rustic red ones. So as you can see, some of them have got white on like this and some of them are just plain red. So I think it's a great mixture when they're all put on together. I'm using 10 millimetre dowels, which I ordered from uh, Amazon. I'll again link those below. So I'm using those in between. So I'll show you exactly how I'm laying the bricks. It's fairly straightforward. It's a little bit scary at first, but then you kind of get into the swing of things and it is then much easier. So I've been using this and all I've been doing, I've just, this is the one that I've just cut down to size which I will show you the cutting process in a minute, um, which, side, which side it was. So that was the brick slip before and I've just cut it down. So yeah, it was this side. So what I've done is I've put a little bit of the tile adhesive already on the wall and then I'm also just going to put a little bit on the back of the brick slip like this and just kind of smooth it out onto there. And then all I'm going to do is kind of shuffle it rather than just sticking it straight ahead, kind of shuffle it into place because that means that it holds a little bit better and pop one of the 10, 10 millimeter dowels underneath as little space savers just so that you can get this, this kind of same size all the way along and so the, the brick slips don't slip when you put them on. So yeah, it's just as simple as that. So I've kind of been doing two layers at a time. does dry in 20 minutes so you are kind of under a bit of pressure to get it all finished. Um, I've just made another lot of the tile adhesive up. So once I've got that spread all the way along then just decide which brick slip you want. I'm not really doing them in any pattern I'm just kind of doing it as I go along. So I'm going to start at this one here um, and just test it out see what it looks like. Once you're happy with it, then just put some of the tile adhesive onto the back. And shuffle that into place. As you can see, if you shuffle, then it does hold much better to the wall. Um, I did have a line along here which I've done with this spirit level to make sure it's straight. So I can still roughly see that. So what I want to do is just try and make sure that the tiles, the brick slips are straight as I go. So there's the line along there. Um, and then I just pop a few little savers underneath like that. So then I'm going to see how that one a little bit big so if I find one that's a little bit shorter than that it's usually do the job no that one's still a little bit long let's try this one perfect
I was hoping that that one might fit on the end, but it doesn't. So what I do if I need to cut them, take my dirty glove off um, and then I find a tile that I'm happy with to cut. So I'll say go for this one and I just measure along there. And I literally just put a mark on there. I do it on the back of the tile. And then I'll show you downstairs what I use to cut them. I've been cutting them outside because you do get a lot of mess from them. So when it comes to cutting, this is what I'm using. So this was recommended to me over a tile cutter. Um, it's called a grinder. And as I said earlier, I hired this because I didn't want to have the expense of buying one. So it's very simple to use, but obviously you've got to be really, really careful. As a disclaimer, what I'm going to say is if anyone's doing this at home, make sure you use safety goggles um, and just be really, really careful. So all you do is push, it, push this in and push it down to start. So it's quite simple really. I'm going to show you with these three how I do it. There's the first one. So basically I just cut down. I don't need, you don't need to go all the way through because at the end they will just snap off and that's the side that I want. So that's perfect. Right, so on to the next one. So it's now the following day, um, I lost light last night so I couldn't really do any more and also it was Saturday night so we had a nice takeaway and I stopped at about 6 o'clock. So I was kind of on and off all day um, because I had the kids to sort out and things like that and this is how much I've got done. So once I got into the swing of it and I picked up a bit of a momentum it was so much easier. So yeah I'm just going to carry on today, finish the top, as you can see I've got that much left to do just up there so I'm probably about uh, I would say two-thirds of the way through um, and then I need to do all the pointing once that's finished so yeah I'll get cracked on with it So as you can see, I'm almost there. I've got right near the top and it's too narrow to put a full brick. So what I've had to do is cut them down to size. I've had to cut them along there, which was probably the trickiest part actually, um, but I've managed it, so that's fine. So they're gonna go along the top and then that is the final row of bricks. And that's it, all finished. So what I need to do now is start pointing them. And I think because I started yesterday on the lower ones, what I might do is start pointing those now because by the time I get to the top, they'll all be dry. So I'll let you know how I'm gonna do that. Um, it might be a little bit challenging. I've heard that this is probably the most challenging part. Um, there's different ways you can do it. You can use a gun or a bag. So yeah. I'll have a try now and I'll let you know how I'm getting on. This is the mortar mix that I'm using, sand and cement mortar mix. Um, I think it was about £10 for this bag 
and it's got a mixture of sand and cement in there as you can see like a bag of cement and the rest is sand so i'm going to mix it in this bucket here and i'll show you the consistency once it's all mixed so as you can see i have started pointing um this is probably the hardest part i'm not going to lie out of everything um, it's taken me a little bit to master it and my fingers are red raw so what i would say is use gloves i've got some marigolds out so you've just seen a little clip of the sand and cement mix that i'm using so where i went wrong is i was mixing that too thick um you can buy pointing guns and you can also buy pointing bags but me trying to save money obviously we're in a rented house so i'm trying to keep the cost as low as possible for this i decided to use my piping bags that i've already got from morrison's so you get a roll of piping bags like this and actually they've been great because although they're smaller than an actual pointing bag they are perfect because you can't put too much in it and it also it dries and sets quite quickly so i think these are the perfect size so i've been using one of these so they just come off like that and i've just been cutting the end off and filling this up with the mortar the place where i went wrong is that i was mixing the mortar too thick it's got to be quite loose so that it goes in here and you can pipe it onto the wall because if it's too thick it just doesn't come out of the piping bag and it just makes life so difficult and also you've got to remember that you're not building a house so the mortar is not is not holding a house up it's basically just filling in the gaps and the brick slips are already attached to the wall i would say that it's more cosmetic than anything you don't actually have to fill the space is in if you don't want to you can leave the brick slips just like that so make sure that the mortar mix isn't too thick i'll show you the consistency in a second and then i'll show you basically how i've been applying it so here is the mortar mix and you can see that it's quite sloppy you need it to be kind of a little bit so it basically just kind of drops off your spoon like that or whatever you can for you too to mix it with so then you just fill your bag with the mortar mixture give it a shake down to the bottom to make sure there's no air bubbles in it and then you can see here where I've already got to with the pointing so all you do is starting off at one end you just squeeze the bag as you go along a bit like icing cupcakes if you've ever done that before so you just kind of squeeze in and let it go in like that the down ones so i kind of start away from me and move it closer and i just twist the end of the bag and squeeze at the same time it looks really easy and to be honest it is easy if you've got the mortar mixed to the right consistency if you've got it too thick it just doesn't come out and it's really frustrating so that would be my top tip really is just make sure you've not got it too thick so all you do is keep going along like this I noticed that I missed one earlier up here there we go <laughs> um, and you just leave that you let that dry a little bit so don't worry about going back to this at the minute put a bit more in there just leave that and let it dry probably about five ten minutes you'll see it starts to just lighten a little bit around the edges and then that's when you run over it with your finger but i'll show you that in a second so i'm just going to continue doing this kind of one section at a time it's very messy make sure you've got a cover down below I've got a dust sheet down there because I've literally made so much mess so my bag's empty now so then what I do is I check the consistency of the mortar that's left in the bucket and if needs be I just add a splash of water just to loosen it because like I said before if it's too thick it just won't pipe out of here and it'll just be a nightmare just it's so frustrating
okay so i've zoomed in as much as i can to show you the next part so as you can see along here these are the bits that have just that are just starting to dry out a little bit these are the bits that i've already done um, and then as it dries out you can see it just starts turning a little bit lighter and then all you need to do is squash it in a little bit and run over it with your finger you can get special tools to use for this but I just find much easier with my finger <laughs> so you're just pushing it in and spreading it along just to make it look a little bit neater And as I said before, you need a dust sheet on the floor because you do get a lot coming off and it makes a lot of mess. But it starts to look a lot neater once you've gone over the lines like that. So the rest just needs to set a little bit more and that is finished. I'm not going to lie, the pointing was definitely the hardest part, like quite stressful actually. My hands are really sore, my arms are sore, um, yeah, just definitely the hardest part, but stick with it. If you've got a huge area to do, then I would probably try and break it down over a couple of days because, as you can see, this is not a massive area, but it's still taken me most of the day to get it finished. It's just quite fiddly. Main tip is, I know I've said this quite a few times now, but main tip is don't have it don't have the mortar too thick. Keep it to a, the perfect consistency so that it comes out of the um, piping bag or whatever you're using. Keep the mortar the right consistency. If it's too thick, you just have a nightmare with it. So now that it's finished, I've let it dry, more or less. It's been drying for about half an hour and I'm gonna just rub over with a brush now because then it'll just loosen any bits that have stuck to the bricks. Best way to do this is kind of at a 45 degree angle like this. So you're going across the bricks. All that's left to do now is paint the edges yeah, and attach the fireplace. Couldn't be happier with how it's turned out. I absolutely love it. I think it's really transformed this space and every time I walk into the bedroom now I feel like I'm walking into some New York loft room it just feels so nice I think the exposed brick is such a lovely feature in here and I also think it goes really well with the color that I painted the wardrobes all that's left to do is paint the bottom there because when I first painted the wardrobes there was carpet down so obviously I just painted to where the carpet was so I just need to paint that little strip along there and then I am finished I'll do a really close up so you can see the colour of the mortar now that it's dried. I really, really love the sandy colour. I think it's perfect. I'm super, super happy with it. So I just had to attach the fireplace with um, screws and plugs at either side. I'm really pleased with how that looks and I've just added a few Christmassy pieces. But I'm really looking forward to um, styling this up for different seasons because I just think it's such a nice feature. I think it probably cost me about £250 in total and that's including the brick slips and the delivery and then the equipment that I hired and the materials like the mortar and the tile adhesive and because I did the work myself I saved a lot of money. I would definitely do it again, definitely 100%. I'll put a few cutouts in here of how the bedroom looked before so you can get an idea of what it was like when we first moved in. So here is how it's looking now and how it looked when we first moved in. And then also once I'd painted these wardrobes and painted the boxed area, I put a mirror up. But I can honestly say that now I have put these brick slips up, it feels like a different bedroom. I really, really love it. I'm so happy with it. So if you've got any questions, then leave any comments down below and I'd also love to know what you think. So it'd be great if you could leave me a little message down below and I will catch you next time. Bye.